Pediatricians tell me that as many students struggle in today's learning environment, parents are starting to think that ADD or ADHD could be the culprit. However, they say that prescription drugs like Vyvanse, Ritalin, or Adderall might not be the solution. Right now, you guys are looking at the bell tower here at Wilson Hall on Converse University's campus. You can hear the bells ringing. 20 of them just went off. Those were all in memory of Dr. Jeffrey Barker, who's being remembered here by so many, the faculty, the staff, students, leadership, everybody here on this campus. Dr. Barker passed away last night after crashing his bicycle along Meadowbrook Drive in Spartanburg. Right, Ayla, I'm here right now, and this is just about as close as we can get to where the shooting actually happened and behind me there's still a little bit of a police presence here and we don't know a ton right now but and point and open <laughs> obviously I'm no expert when it comes to ballet but I spoke with those who are and they told me this gift they've received couldn't have come at a better time Diane, everyone I spoke with out here today said they had an appointment. Most of them are over 70 and here to get their second dose. The Spartanburg County Coroner's Office responded to a call right here at Clifton Beach for a possible incident early Saturday afternoon. Driving past Willie Ballou's home, you'll see more than a dozen balloons fluttering in the wind. But each one represents something much greater than your typical celebration. From nurses and doctors, they only gave me a zero to five percent chance to make it. That's Baloo, or as his family and nurses call him, the walking miracle man. It all started in April with a simple cough. He says he brushed off his allergies. Before this, I thought COVID was propaganda. But just a couple days later, he tested positive for COVID, started experiencing respiratory failure, and then put in a medically induced coma. In a coma for 29 days and then I came out and then I was intubated on a ventilator for another 30 days and while I was intubated I ended up experiencing a perforated bowel. 98 days in the hospital altogether he's only 34 years old. His view for a lot of that was similar to this new PSA from the state's health and emergency management departments pushing for people to get vaccinated. For Baloo, this all meant months without being in the same room as his twin boys. I could see my children via FaceTime, but that's not like seeing them in person. But when it was safe, Come here, man. the hospital staff concocted a surprise reunion. To be here is like a blessing. Baloo is home now, but still recovering. It wasn't the COVID, it was it's everything after COVID. He's working with an occupational therapist to build back muscle. I did lose the strength in my right arm. His family is closer than ever, especially in their faith and gratitude for everyone who stood in Baloo's corner. I am thankful. My children are thankful. They also have one last message for others. COVID is real. If you don't think so, please, please look at Willie. It is very serious. With Baloo, better known as the miracle man, living proof. Four families had to scramble out of this apartment complex after the roof caved in on Saturday night. Now, residents here are saying these type of issues are reoccurring and nothing is being done about it. Around 9 o'clock at night on Saturday. It was me and my younger niece. What if I couldn't have saved her? What if I couldn't have got her out of the way? The roof over the heads of some Shimwood Crossing apartment residents collapsed. Tamika Pilgrim saying she walked away with a fractured wrist. I can't go to work. What does that leave my family? And everyone impacted now living in a hotel nearby. But former residents of the complex say this isn't the first and only issue they've had. When it rained, the carpet would become moist. You would smell mold. If you touched the walls, the walls would fall in. If you opened the door too hard, the door knobs would fall in. Families say they've asked for help to fix the issues, but say managers are just patching the problem and not getting to the root of it. It is the job 
of management. It is the job of the people who own this complex to make sure that it is safe and inhabitable for the people that live in it. In response, the property manager of the complex sent this statement saying, quote, as with all issues, our goal is to work earnestly to resolve them and to do so as quickly as possible. Some things slash items may take just a little more time, but rest assured that we are giving them the attention they need. We don't want to be there. We want to be at home. Okay. My neighbor Simone, her baby standing outside saying, Mommy, I want to go home and this is not fair. And we shouldn't have to keep on talking about this and we shouldn't have to be out here. Residents say management told them the apartments will be ready again on Monday. In Greenville, Sophia Radeball, 7 News. 20 rings. Symbolizing the two decades Dr. Jeffrey Barker served Converse University. Rider ran off the right side of the roadway and spilled the bike. Ms. Barber County Coroner says he died when his bicycle crashed along Meadowbrook Road Wednesday evening in Spartanburg. He understood the classroom. Dr. Boone Hopkins says hearing about this sudden loss has been devastating, but tells us Barker was doing what he loved. He was out on his bike when he passed doing one of the things that he loved the most. Dr. Barker was a man held in high regard by Dr. Hopkins. A dear friend and, and trusted mentor to me. He often believed in me before I believed in myself. Dr. Hopkins says Dr. Barker had an incredibly generous soul and he loved to teach. He was provost and a professor of philosophy. We're told he left a lasting impact on so many of his students. Very unreal. Like Alana Farmer. I've seen him a few weeks ago and had that conversation, you know, hey, I'm really excited for the, the new semester and, you know, being Converse University. She tells us she's going to remember him as a phenomenally inclusive man. Dr. Hopkins is taking over as interim president. He says he has very large shoes to fill. I'm going to have the opportunity to carry on my friend's legacy. But even though Dr. Barker will no longer be walking these sidewalks on Converse University's campus. We are Converse when we are connected. Dr. Hopkins says his memory will very much stay alive. With the bell serving as an opportunity to pause and remember his legacy. Our photojournalist Lauren Fleming caught up with the nonprofit behind the playground. We're celebrating today. The whole town of Gaffney, South Carolina now has an inclusive playground. It was inspired by two boys and a mother here who live here. We raised over a quarter of a million dollars for this place. But this playground is designed for children with and without disabilities. It's designed for everyone. Typically, playgrounds have mulch or wood-engineered fiber, and it's tough for people and children with mobility devices to get through it. It's a spongy, safe surfacing. There's also ramping to different platforms because some children can't maneuver climbers. Our activity panels are sensory-rich. They're at the height where a wheelchair can go right underneath. Some children, and some are here today, they have low muscle tone, and they're not able to hold themselves up on a typical belt swing. And so those high back swing allows children to play. <laughs> if more communities would just think about how can we become more inclusive of, of all others, and so there's no barriers, no social barriers, no physical barriers, we'll live in a better world. A historic day in the Little Africa community of Spartanburg as a new sign was unveiled earlier today. The old sign had been vandalized several times and those in the community raised money for the new one. The community was founded in the 1880s by former enslaved people so the African American community could build its own economy. Those living there say they are proud to carry on this history. Last year, our sign was vandalized, and now um, in true um, Little Africa form, we have a much larger, bigger, better sign that we are very proud of. A community day was held following the unveiling with bounce houses, a DJ, and plenty of food.
Well, that is 7 News' own Diane Lee singing the national anthem with the Spartanburg Jazz Ensemble at Red, White and Boom this evening. The celebration featured the presentation of colors and military branch recognition. People of all ages enjoyed the celebration despite the heat, finding ways to cool off and enjoy the day. People enjoying themselves, family and friends, most definitely. Yes, I'm excited to see everybody here, and um, I hate that we missed it last year, but I'm glad to see it this year, and it's about to be so fun. Free flags and beads were also handed out at the event. Look, live pictures now we've just gotten of the scene. The shooting has happened at the Limestone Courts. That's on North Limestone Street. No word yet on the condition of the people who have been shot or what may have led to the shooting. But as you can see, our crew is there on the scene getting updates. We'll have them here and on WSPA.com. Back in Spartanburg County and Broome at home, a lot of Hawaiian themes early on in the season in the stands. I'll tell you, folks are decked out. This turned out to be a tight ball game. Jameer Dewberry, a 15 yard run in the third quarter for the home team trying to make Hawaiian night a big celebration. Later on, it's Dewberry again turning the corner and that sets up Adonis Burgess for a touchdown, put Broom ahead by 14 and the Centurions hang on for the win. They've won four in a row and now six out of seven against Chesney. Final count, 48-41, a win for Broom.